Well, hi there. When I went to NERD, New England Reptile Distributors, and got to spend time around Lilith, their all-white King Cobra, I did a very stupid thing. Lilith, despite being a color that would make survival very difficult, was discovered in the wild, several years old, and remarkably alive. And at least part of the reason that I think she beat the odds is because she has a particularly mm, aggressive disposition. When we went out to nerd, I didn't even want to be in the same room as Lilith. Fortunately, Kevin McCurley took the time to train me on handling king cobras. I handled two of his most manageable kings. It was an unforgettable experience. After that, I felt more comfortable being in the same room with Lilith. Then I watched her push two expert venomous snake handlers to their absolute limits. But when Kevin asked if I wanted to do anything else before he put her away, I said a very stupid thing. I kind of want to touch her. The rest is history, and we have a whole video about the experience. But for me, there is something just so magical about interacting with, and in some cases, physically coming into contact with an animal. It is one thing to see an animal at the zoo, but there is something altogether different about actually touching one. I recently got to touch a penguin. I've never felt more connected with penguins in my life. Clint's reptile room, where I am right now, exists to allow people to come and interact with, and in many cases hold, animals they otherwise would not. I watch the fear melt away from them, and love, actual love, grow for these animals. There's power in touch. But when it comes to handleability, not all reptiles are created equal. So I want to share five reptiles that I have here in Clint's reptile room that are the most handleable of all. Buttercup here is as nice as is possible for a snake to be. She genuinely puts up with anything. Like I often cup her head like this, I'm like, snakes hate this, what do you think she's gonna do when I let her go? Oh, nothing, cause she is just as laid back as a snake could possibly be. I've never seen her show any defensiveness at all. And to me, she is the best first snake to show to somebody. But I have learned that she is not the snake that people uncomfortable with snakes find the least intimidating. The snake that people that are uncomfortable with snakes find the least intimidating is this, the Kenyan sand boa. Why? Well, I think it starts with their small size and very goofy look. Males like Sarlacc here don't get much bigger than this. They're tiny. And as such, everything would eat them. They stay safe by burying themselves in the sand with only their goofy little eyeballs sticking out of the sand to see what's going on out there. Do you see his goofy little eyes? Even when they need to move, they stay buried. They basically swim through the sand. And to slide through the sand, they need to be very smooth and slippery, except at the back the part of the body that they use to push themselves through the sand. That part needs to be very rough so that they can get traction. Can you feel how it is smooth at the front and then rough at the back? Very rarely does somebody not want to touch this snake at this point. And if they will touch this snake, they will end up handling a lot of snakes. But this guy is usually the first, not only that they will touch, but also that they will handle. He isn't just small and silly looking, but he also tends not to move quickly, if at all. You notice how he's just sitting here? Many small snakes are very active and darty. This often makes people uncomfortable with snakes feel very nervous. But I can have them just put out their hands like a bowl, and this snake will just sit there motionless, like a sausage. Which I would say is their only real con when it comes to handling. They're boring to handle. But sometimes a snake that is boring to handle is just what you need. And speaking of boring to handle, there is the bearded dragon. Now these lizards can be very fast, active, and interactive. But when it comes to handling, they're so great it could be considered boring. Or just plain wonderful. I don't know if bearded dragons like to be handled, but they sure do put up with it like champs. You go and scoop them up and they're like, Okay, 
You stick them on your shoulder and they're like, uh, I guess this is what we're gonna do. And they'll just hang out with you for a long time. Honestly, the biggest reason to shorten how long you should hold your dragon is just so it can bask and digest its food. You can even give them a bath before handling and they'll do their business and even that risk is avoided. They're just unbelievably laid back with handling. And they can't even drop their tails. It's magnificent. They are the best lizards to hand to a child, in my opinion. They're big enough that they can handle a little grabbing or squeezing, which kids will sometimes do, but they're small and calm enough that they're not gonna hurt the child either. They're great to hold no matter who you are, but I think they're the best lizards to hand to a child that there is. Well, that is, unless you consider snakes to be lizards. And I pretty clearly do. I mean, whenever people see Gus Gus, they ask me if he's an iguana or a monitor lizard. And iguanas and monitor lizards are both more closely related to snakes than they are to tegus, like Gus Gus. So, yeah, snakes are lizards. Don't get me started. There's a whole video about this. Anyway, all I'm trying to say is that there is a snake that is even better to hand to a child than any non-snake lizard. That is the ball python. Now, some people will say that ball pythons are boring to handle, but sometimes boring is exactly what you want. When I first got ball pythons, I used to hold them while I would feed the beetles in my lab. This could take hours. They are the snakes that I put on the shoulders of every kid whenever I do a reptile presentation. And recently, my daughter Martha, who absolutely loves all of the animals, made it very clear that she wanted to handle a snake. These are the only snakes that I trust her to hold. They're very robust little snakes that can handle the mistakes that children and perhaps even you will make, yet they generally have great personalities and pose no danger at all to the person holding them. They don't move quickly. If you want a relaxing snake to hold and hang out, these are the ultimate. But what if you want something more engaging? Not simply something to hold, but something to interact with. Well. You could go with the best of all pet lizards, the Emerald Tree Skink. You're probably tired of hearing me talk about these, but there was just no way that they weren't gonna be on this list. They are the opposite of bearded dragons to handle, and yet they are amazing to handle. Do bearded dragons like to be handled? I have no idea, but they put up with it well. These guys put up with nothing. You can't reach in and grab an Emerald Tree Skink, they'll run away but they love people. You open the enclosure and they jump onto you. You don't handle emerald tree skinks, they hang out on you. Everything is on their terms. This is what they want to do. In fact, the biggest downside I have found to these lizards so far is that if their enclosure is near where you are all day, they will damage their faces trying to get to you. I can't walk up to the enclosure and not let them jump onto me. They'll start jumping into the glass. And yet, if I'm not there, I can leave the enclosure wide open and they won't go anywhere. They don't want out. They just want you. This isn't a lizard to hold while you watch a movie or feed your beetles, but as an activity, I'm not sure handling an animal of any kind is more enjoyable. But before we get to the final reptile on this list, I want to take a moment to say thank you to our rad fans and our stinking rad fans whose names appear at the end of our videos from Patreon for all that they do for us here at Clint's Reptiles. I will tell you that there are more than five great reptiles to handle, and a few honorable mentions will appear on this week's Patreon Extras video. Patreon Extras is an extra video that we release each week for our supporters at Patreon. If you'd like to see that video and other perks we have for our supporters or would just like to help us continue to create videos like this one, please check out our Patreon page. But anyway, there may just be an animal that is more enjoyable to hold, even than an emerald tree skink. And that would be a large, but not too large snake. Smaller snakes like sand boas and ball pythons can be very enjoyable to hold, but bigger snakes, can be a much more immersive experience. That said, if you see our video about the green anaconda or the reticulated python, a snake can become so large that it's physically exhausting or even dangerous to attempt to wrestle it one-on-one. -on -one. But there are snakes that are big, 
without being difficult to handle. And in my experience, the common boa, also known as the Colombian boa, though not all of them descend from purely Colombian bloodlines, the BCI, though that acronym is now outdated, or more accurately, the BI, is the most enjoyable snake to handle. When people come into the reptile room that are afraid of snakes, they generally start out handling the sand boa and leave having handled this beautiful girl. And after they hold her, they are usually in love with snakes. She is seven feet long and feels like a weighted blanket to hold. She is much more active and engaging than a ball python. But the feeling of holding a snake like this is such an immersive experience. It is like a full upper body hug. And yet, she's still small enough that she isn't difficult to handle or dangerous. I can see how other similarly sized snakes could be similarly wonderful, but it's hard to imagine how it could get any better. And if you want to try out handling this girl or any of the 60 plus other species that we have here at Clint's Reptile Room, please come visit us in Springville, Utah. And what other animals do you think belong on this list? As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. By the way, this video we made in response to a, a fan suggestion from Michael Kaczmarek and an we really do. We read the comments. We love the suggestions. So if you have a cool suggestion for a video you'd like to see on this channel, please throw it down there. We might just make it. <laughs>